The time has finally come, Mr. Leech. Spiral has been released. And like a spiral, you find yourself full circle with this game. Are you ready? Bring it. So Spiral tells the story of a hard-boiled detective who finds himself the center of a grisly game that targets members of the police force. So the day has finally come. I don't know if there has been a movie that has been more anticipated as far as being able to wrap up a review series as this one. I first started my Spiral, or excuse me, my Saw review series early last year in anticipation and hyping up the new one Spiral, which was supposed to come out the beginning of last summer. Then the world shut down. Then that movie delayed itself a year immediately. No continuous release dates, no pushing and pushing. Nope, just see you next year. So the review series got delayed. I've been cranking them out over the past couple of days trying to coincide with this release. And now we are finally here at the culmination of it all. My spiral review. Does this movie bring us into new territory? Does Spiral merit its existence? Is this something that gives us new ideas? Does it breathe new life into the Saw franchise? Or is it just another cash grab that's trying to bleed this franchise dry when it has already scraped the bottom of the barrel a couple of times? Let's find out. So starting right off with the positives for Spiral, I will say this movie does do a pretty good job at holding on to what Saw fans want, what Saw fans expect, while also trying to do something different. You can't go too far with this franchise. You can't do something that's so far removed from a Saw film. But as far as the overall storyline of this hard-boiled detective trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out who the killer is, trying to figure out what the killer's motivation, what lesson they're trying to teach, I do think that it does a good job at pushing a few boundaries. A movie that belongs in this franchise. It's not a huge separate thing, but at the same time, it does have its own flavor to it. It does have its own direction, and it does feel like it's inspired by Saw, not like Jigsaw that's like, hey, we're doing something new, here's the same old shit. Hello, Detective Banks. Do you know where your officers are? And I think part of what I liked about this is that it does get back to that earlier Saw film flavor to where it's more about a detective story. It's more of a cop film than it is a torture porn movie. Quickly after about Saw 3, these movies were just about the traps. Nobody really gave a shit about the plot of the story, including the filmmakers themselves, and it was just about, hey, we're gonna tell you some exposition here and there, we're gonna flash back and forth between a couple of characters, we're gonna have a twist that might suck and it might be okay, but we're all here for the gore, right? We're all here to see people get torn apart and boiled and shot in the face and all that other crazy stuff that we've seen in this franchise time and time again. Well, Spiral takes it back to the basics. Spiral takes it back to that direction that James Wan originally gave us in the original film, which is there's a killer out there that has a really unique method of getting out his kills. He's trying to teach us something, but we're going to follow the detective as he tries to figure this out. The traps, the gore, the carnage candy, that's here to service the story. The story does not play second fiddle. And speaking of the traps, I think they were all pretty badass. You know, maybe they're not the best this franchise has given us. There's been some pretty gnarly shit in the first couple of movies, but I think every single one of them stood out. There wasn't one that was just this total fizzle. There wasn't one that felt like it was a derivative of something we've seen before. They're pretty unique, they're pretty gnarly, and they give you just the right amount of carnage. It doesn't go too far where this feels like the later movies in this franchise that it was all about just gut, guts and gore and let's make it as gross as possible. It's gross, but it's also tense, effective, and very well shot. Along with all the rest of this movie, production value-wise, this could be argued as the best looking Saw film. Jigsaw had some really nice production value too. These were always lower budget movies. They got lower as they went along. These were movies that they could turn out really quick for a quick profit. Spiral looks like a very professionally made film. It looks pretty medium-sized budget. It looks like it's worthy of the big screen. You got Darren Lynn Bowsman here returning as a director. He directed two, three, and four, if I'm not mistaken. And he definitely got a budget hike. 
like. It was probably fun for him to come back to this franchise, do something different, and have a little bit more fun with the budget that he had, have a little bit more to play with. You see the production value in the camera, you see the production value in the cinematography. It overall just feels much better. It doesn't feel like this low rent, basic cable TV show episode that quite a few of the Saw sequels have felt like. Movie was also paced really well. I was actually kind of surprised whenever I started to feel like I was in the third act because the movie just kept moving along at a nice clip. It never really meandered. It never really felt like we were just exposition dumping every once in a while. It bounced between the traps and between Chris Rock's character getting clues, trying to search things out, trying to have the aftermath of these traps, like talking to the next of kin. Like nothing in this movie felt like fat. It felt like it was all trimmed to a really reasonable running time and all the way throughout it I was engaged there was no point where I was like fuck this is dragging or holy shit we're already done that was okay and finally one thing that I myself genuinely appreciated that this movie took the effort to do was that they kept the whole moral question of these traps of the jigsaw traps or I guess you call them spiral traps at this point they kept that moral question intact. It was not ridiculous to where you see something, it's like, okay, this guy just wants to kill people. I never bought into Jigsaw's moral code. I certainly never bought into Hoffman's moral code. This, I can actually get behind. He's still a villain. There's still a fucked up killer out there. There's still a dude doing some gnarly shit, but his motivation by the end of it actually makes sense. It's socially relevant, and there is some people that's going to get behind that and be like, hey, I kind of get it. At the same time, all of the traps that they showed, the people legitimately had an opportunity to win. This didn't feel like something where, dude, nobody's gonna fucking make that choice. Everybody's gonna die. They kept that logic sound, and at the same time, every one of these individual traps made logical sense with the lesson that the killer was trying to teach these individual people. It made thematic sense for every single victim. Moving on to the mixed aspect, the big one here is Chris Rock. Now, I will say he does much better than I thought he was going to. Shame on whoever the fuck cut that trailer together because all of his worst dialogue execution was all cut into that trailer. Chris Rock, did you piss off whoever the hell was in that marketing department because somebody's got a bone to pick with you. But from the start of this movie, I was like, hey, I'm actually buying it. I'm buying him as this character. There's moments where he's actually funny, which if you're gonna have Chris Rock in a movie, you gotta have some jokes here, as well as Samuel L. Jackson. So that was cool. Like whenever he's this kind of wise cracking detective and he's, you know, not really worried or trying to show fear or trying to be intense, whenever he's just a nonchalant guy that's just got this cool swagger to him, I thought he was great but there's also moments in the movie where I felt like he was trying way too hard. I felt like the director should have got a couple more takes out of him because there's moments where he says a line and it's like, dude, that's where you don't convince me. That's where it really feels like you're acting. Even like just his expression sometimes where he's like, come on, you gotta give me this case. Or even some of the scenes that were in the trailer that were dialogue. That was a distraction to get us out of the precinct. I appreciate the fact that he wants to broaden his horizons. This was his original idea. He's the reason this movie exists. So full respect for the guy for wanting to take the lead in this. And he does better than I thought he would. But I'd be lying if I said that uh, there's no actor that could have pulled off that role a little bit better or a lot a bit better. Moving on to the negatives, one thing that did bug me by the third act of the film is the, the way that the film is edited, there's a lot of flashbacks. There's a lot of going back and showing events that happened before this film to give more context to Chris Rock's character, to give more context to maybe a clue that he just found, or somehow he's, how he's personally tied to the victim, or personally tied to the clue. And I felt like it got really repetitive by the third act, because there's some flashbacks where you only see a segment of it, and they show it five or six more times and just give you a little bit more and a little bit more. And I don't feel like the full picture by the fifth or sixth flashback was really worth chopping up that many times. Some of them are actually predictable enough to where you get the first piece and you're like, okay, I can figure it out from here. And I just don't like when a movie or a movie, a filmmaker doesn't give enough confidence to his audience. It's like, dude, you don't have to spell it out that much. You don't have to leave that many breadcrumbs. We're not idiots. Or at least some of us aren't. And my final negative is that, for me personally, I felt that the final reveal, the final twist, the, the unmasking of the villain was blatantly obvious by about halfway through the film. Uh, for some people, that might even be more. I'm really not sure. That's a very subjective thing. Some people might be shocked. Some people might walk in from the trailer and know what's going on. 
about 45 minutes in, I was like, I bet it's that person. And I bet this is the reason why. And I was dead on. As soon as they started doing the Scooby-Doo, like, here's who the killer is. I was like, no shit. Like by editing choices and by certain lines of dialogue, for me, it was almost like they were shouting it at you. And that might be a big bummer for some people because a lot of hardcore Saw fans, all they want from these movies is gory traps and a really cool twist that hopefully they didn't see coming or at least has a really good effective punch at the end of it. And I don't really feel like this had a giant punch at the end of it because like I said, I, I saw it coming. I saw the motivation, I saw the thematic element, how that ties into the kills, and I knew the person's identity. So I was like, okay, what else you got for me? You got a second twist coming? Because I got that one. But overall, guys, I gotta be honest. I was genuinely surprised how much I enjoyed this. I had such low expectations after that last trailer that I would have bet money. I was going to come in here, turn the camera on, and tell you, well, guess what? Another one that you don't have to bother with. But color me surprised. I actually think this one's worth checking out. I think that this one is actually one of the better ones of the franchise. And something I have not been able to say for mm, six films now, I'm kind of looking forward to more. So if you're a fan of the Saw franchise and you want to see what a new incarnation of this storyline can do, definitely check this one out. I thought the traps were great. I really liked the social context and the motivations, and I found myself pretty entertained. Chris Rock was a bit hit and miss, and I definitely think they could have executed the final act a little bit better. But overall, I do think this is worth checking out. So find this thing online when it's released and stream it. So what do you guys think of Spiral from the Book of Saw? Do you think that this is a good jumping off point to get more Saw movies? Or did you feel like this was just too much like the original franchise, there's nothing else to do with it, and it just needs to die? Valiant effort, but no thank you. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and we will talk about it. And we are finally wrapped up with this goddamn franchise. I'm sorry it's taken so long. Please like and share this video, hit that subscribe button so you can check out what the next franchise I'm going to take on is, as well as the upcoming Resident Evil rankings, which are just around the corner. I'm going to be talking about all of the games, all the canon games anyway. I'm going to be talking about my favorite boss battles, my favorite characters. If you're a Resident Evil fan, definitely check that shit out. Thank you guys, as always, for watching, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be. All right, I'm done. I'm finally done. Can you let me the fuck out of here now? Not so fast, Mr. Leach. The game is not finished. Dude, the game is done. I fucking did what you asked. Let me out now. I admire your tenacity, but we're just getting started. Just like your review series, your release has been delayed. Below you is a floor panel with a red X. Lift it to find the key to your further suffering. Oh my God. Oh no. Mother f